Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. When I look at those credits, I just think about the sheer number of people that have come into the New West Symphony family to help us present these beautiful performances. And I want to thank all of them, all of the, the team that's behind the cameras, the lights, our team that's in the office helping to make these experiences memorable, and to our New West Symphony musicians who just do such a fabulous job with an array of repertoire. Thank you so, so very much. Let's bring Wu Man onto the screen. Your work has been just absolutely treasured. Welcome. Hi, Michael. Oh, that was amazing fantastic. concert. Oh, thank you so much. We are so grateful for your participation. Uh, just is just stunning to have you with us and helping us understand the sounds. Um, we did have a question from one of our audience members about the frets on the people. Okay. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yes. Um, if you see that there's a two uh, different structure of the frets. On the top, there's a six very big. Um, and the, we often use a different material, sometimes in um, jade, ivory, boom. Um, but the bottom, 20-something frets uh, made by bamboo. So that's why um, hip hop music always we call silk and the bamboo music, because the <laughs> instrument material, yeah. Wow, that's, that is remarkable. And I was, so, I was so moved by the fact that you were part of the creation of Tundon's Concerto and that phone call that started the process along Tell us a little bit about the interaction that you have with composers in this ground floor moment, creating creating these pieces. Um, you obviously you already heard that there's a Bach in there, and there are also a Chinese folk songs. Um, both the folk songs, Little Cabbage, and the Bach Peru is it's very um, popular in China. Both tomb. Um, so we, when I was in school, we have to learn a lot of Chinese folk songs. And Wen Tanden asked me um, if, if I know some folk song will be fit, kind of atmosphere, that kind of music style. So I just sing over the phone. I sing this little cabbage, da 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 da. Um, so that's it. <laughs> wow. And then I imagine because you many composers are writing works for you. Do you have those kinds of conversations or is that a special relationship with Tandun? Well, Tandun, because we came from the same school um, and uh, in Beijing, um, but also um, a lot of composers actually very close. Uh, when I when they write a piece for me, we always, uh, you know, discussion, talk, uh, there are a lot of Chinese composers like Chen Yi, Zhou Long, U.S. Michael, you know them <laughs> all. Um, so we always talk, a discussion, you know, what kind of style, you know, the, the pipa is a, a traditional way. So how are we going to bring to sort of a contemporary elements and to mix it with the traditional and the contemporary. So uh, often i very close to work with a composer. Uh, a very astute viewer noticed that the um, the orchestra was asked to retune at the end of the first movement that we played uh, when you're when you're plucking the A and then they and and um, she wanted to know is is that actually what what we heard and yes in fact uh, that is what happens there um, Tan Dun is a very theatrical composer and I think that was part of the the process but also in the fourth movement if, if you go back and watch you'll see all of us freeze. Uh, and he asked us specifically to assume a, a pose to really keep the energy. Yes, that's that's him. <laughs> and and all the shouting, yow yow, that's also very dramatic. Um, so he, he, I think, yeah, he's the, a few composer really enjoy being on stage. <laughs> I think I think that's really true. Um, the other question I. Uh, posed here is whether you have been to the Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a tremendous place. And um, and if you have any future plans, our our audience would like to know so they can come in here. Um, yes, uh, the, the Instrument Museum, they have my display there. 
there's a whole set about me and my very old pipa was there and my pipa case like biggest case in there um so just check it out um i also uh, traveled there played a couple a uh, couple of concert recitals um, in the beautiful, beautiful auditorium. Yeah, if, if, if members of our audience aren't familiar with the Musical Instrument Museum in Northern Phoenix, it is something to be experienced. It's a full technological immersion into the musical cultures of every single nation on the planet and uh, they've done an amazing job it's it's really uh, really very special so i asked you before about your relationship with other composers you yourself as we learned with the silk and bamboo are a composer the chrono string quartet has a project called 50 for the future which you are mm -hmm. among the 50 and i would encourage our audience to to google 50 for the future chronos quartet and take a listen, the, the works of, of your uh, your own works, including what we heard today and of your other composers are available free for people to listen online. Tell us about what they're trying to achieve and what you were trying to achieve when you were participating. Um, yeah, that was a, a few years ago. Uh, as, as some uh, you know, I've been working with the Kronos Quartet for many, many years, like over 20 years. And uh, um, basically, I, uh, Kronos Quartet changed my, the, the, uh, well, I would say like turning points for me being a musician. Um, so um, when they asked me, they have this project, 50 for the future. So they mainly want to be, uh, reach out to the young quartet, a student quartet, and to teach them how to play sort of word music. Uh, if if I write uh, the the quartet, definitely will be not like Mozart, right? So <laughs> so will be a lot of Chinese elements in you know, ornamentation, the style, the music, the way to express. So that's the purpose. I think Kono's quartet want to be a younger generation to learn much more than than just a classical repertoire. Um, so they have a huge group of amazing, amazing composer there. So I would say, Michael, you said I'm composer, but I'm kind of like shy to, to say I'm composer. I basically like an improviser. I, I'm not writing down, I play on my, my pipa and then just take down the notes later. Um, so I, you know, I recorded four times. And that's the four. <laughs> that's the four instrument. Uh, that's the way I want to listen to. Um, so I did uh, four short pieces, and uh, you know, like Chinese painting, um, silk and bamboo. That's my hometown. Tea house music and early. There's also early music, echo, ancient echo. There's also a west part of uh, Chinese traditional music, Uyghur music. Um, so it very different color. Uh, so I'm trying to um, let the younger generation to understand what is a Chinese music when they play on the strings, not, you know, not play Mozart or Beethoven, something else. It's a very different style. And yet the, you have this indigenous Chinese style and sound, but the way that Western music and Chinese music have been mixing, especially over the last 30, 40 years is amazing. And we heard Beethoven, we heard a little a little bit about how um, that influence of composers were uh, very profound on young the development of young musicians in China. And now I think that the table is turned a little bit and we're learning much more about, about Chinese music as well. Y yes, I think it's, uh, it's a fascinating, um, my experience, like I came here I basically learned in the Western music, um, but also it's good a time right now for learning other else. And you know, this this whole global is so big, and there are so many different kind of music style and culture. Um, so it's good to um, to learn to know each other. Well, I, I think with YouTube and with uh, with organizations presenting uh, specifically music up from around the world but also orchestras uh, like ours, opera companies as well, uh, that, are, that are acknowledging the importance of all of the musical influences. And we are so grateful that you were part of that acknowledgement because the, the, the 
the notion of sharing global traditions would not be the same without you in in the world because you have been so so generous uh, over the years with how, and so joyful about sharing those traditions thank you michael thank you wow <laughs> thank you out of curiosity um since we're just just today i think is the end of the lunar new year celebration period i think february 28th were there any special traditions that you had with your family that you that you keep during the new year celebrations uh normally in china yes you know firecracker you know a lot of shopping <laughs> a lot of food um but you know of course right now here every we are staying home but definitely cook we cook a lot of different uh, uh, meal and uh, um, so that's for Chinese, as you know, you know, Chinese, lo we love eat, we love eat. So, um, so the, the new year, basically, it's a gathering together to celebrate with the family, with the friends, with the relatives, but mainly just eat. <laughs> uh, Marianne has a comment for you who says um, in Western music violins made by makers like Stradivarius are especially admired for the quality of their sound are there pipa makers who instru whose instruments are similarly prized um, yes I, I this is a great question um, Pipa, if you have a chance to go to New York Metropolitan Museum, there is a 17th century Pipa and much smaller. So as you see that the instrument actually um, travels and change, changes a lot, uh, different century to different century. So right now I'm holding that instrument, it's more 19, later 19th century version. Uh, and we added much more frets. Uh, so that's kind of a modern now. Um, we because we don't we don't play antique. It's it because it's totally different. It's a different instrument now. Um, we we use natural fingernails in the older days. Use silk strings much softer. Now we use metal strings. Use fake fingernails and much dramatic play, play in the concert hall with the orchestra, with the chamber, with the world music. So. Um, yeah, so it's a different, um, but the quality, yes, we have a very good uh, instrument maker, Luthier maker. They they um, they very good at a different material, you know, red wood, and, and uh, it's just amazingly the quality. Wow. Well, I want to also tell you that through the other presentations that you're that that you have um, helped us with, meet the artists and cultural insights. That you've given us a lot of ideas about how uh, Chinese music and American music through the banjo uh, and through other uh, <laughs> Appalachian folk music, uh, they, they speak to each other. So I'm looking forward to hopefully finding a way for us to explore that as well, because I think that is, uh, I think when you hear banjo and you hear pipa, there's uh, tremendous similarities. Yes, they're definitely connected. Connect, connects both old uh, tradition and uh, yes, when I play pipa, people always come to me and say, sounded like a banjo. Um, <laughs> so I'm looking forward, <laughs> I'm looking forward, yeah. All right, well, we'll have that conversation very soon and, and uh, hopefully be able to offer something to our newest audience. Wu Man, thank you for the months of planning and dialogue about about this this whole subject and, and developing the program with me. Um, and also just for your uh, remarkable um, patience and energy as we made all the recordings. It was great to have you in the New West Symphony family. So thank you very much. Thank you, my pleasure, Michael. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. Have a great night. I'd like to personally thank the patrons who have supported us on this journey of global sounds, local cultures. New West Symphony will continue the season with a tour of Iran festival on April 9th, 10th, and 11th. We continue to make our educational and entertaining programs accessible and relevant to our entire community by including diverse voices in all aspects of program planning and creation. 
our tour of Iran program is presented in collaboration with Farhang Foundation, Iranian Female Composer Association, and prominent faculty from UCLA's Ethnomusicology Department. Thank you for joining us. You can watch all of our programming on demand when and as often as you like, and I hope also that you'll look at New West Symphony's YouTube channel for some wonderful bonus features. Thank you everyone and have a great evening.